I met him in, uh, in Moscow in the conference of the extended defects of semiconductors and uh, in 1986, in March. Oh, sorry. And uh, probably Marco. Oh. <laughs> Malcolm here, and Bob Jones is here. <laughs> and uh, now, Fiat, this one. This conference held uh, just before the Chernobyl disaster. Uh, this is a uh, conference held in March, and disaster in April, yeah? And uh, you know that. You know that uh, 2011, mm. a big earthquake occurred close to the city, Sender City. Is here. Oh, sorry, Sender City is here. And uh, by the earthquake, big tsunami come to this area. Uh, this is just Sender Air problem around here, and this is the tsunami. Height is around 10 meter. And the magnitude is uh, around uh, 1037 electron volts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so, calculation by this energy, so, virus rate of dislocation of this earthquake is uh, around 10 meters. <laughs> because uh, we are experiment ex experimentalist of dislocation. So. We calculate it. And also, by this earthquake, Fukushima disaster occurred. So, by this disaster, many foreigners, including the students, evacuated from this area, according to the suggestion of the government of respective countries. Yeah? This is uh, rather true, because uh, our Japanese is just uh, just in gap of the information, some control of the information about this disaster by government, Japanese government, yeah? Anyway, and at the, uh, and, uh, sorry, nine, uh, the 2011, September, he came to our laboratory, and just so after the after his lectures, so it's here, and this is this location. So. And uh, this is the exercise of the diamond structure. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> uh, for forward uh, the bonding, yeah. So just <laughs> <laughs> and also in uh, 2014, he came here. And this is after his lecture, and many members are uh, here, up here. And also, this is Sally, and in Sendai City Subway, with Mark. So, and, uh, just this is uh, some kind of <laughs> old drama <laughs> sign, nostalgia. And uh, now, main topic, uh, this is Malcolm's early works in semiconductor. Just say that uh, his PhD works and, uh, under supervisor of Bob Jones. Oh, so just say the academic father. And uh, the main topic is today I would like to show is uh, dislocation mobility and electrical properties. Uh, and also dislocation interaction. So just say that uh, dislocation blocking by impurities. Yeah. And then move to the experiment, uh, our experiment to catch him. And the uh, second part is uh, to silent wax in binary semiconductors. So, but uh, this topic is very hard for experiment. And just say, uh, we show the green correlation of 4H 4H SL6 by plastic deformations. So now move. Uh, this is uh, 
dislocation mobility and electrical properties. Yeah? And first, at 1983, uh, he um, published two papers, uh, dislocation, soliton and dislocation. Soliton and dislocation, then, and also calculation of the electrical state, electronic state. Yeah? Uh, this is the structure of the dislocations, uh, dissociated dislocations in semiconductors. 90 degree partial here and 30 degree partial here. And this is a uh, HRE image uh, of calcium arsenide. So two dislocations, two partial dislocations is here. One and second one is here. And this is an uh, image of dangling. So this is a normal structure, and uh, this here, dislocation, yeah? 90 degree partial dislocation here, and also 30 degree dislocation partial here. But these dislocations are uh, deconstruct to save uh, energies, and to then dislocations can make to some, uh, dangle bones make some bonds, and certain appears here. Uh, this is a single period, and also here it's a double period, yes, on <coughs> 90 degree partials, yeah. And these dangling points of dislocation cores show the electronic levels, yeah. And this is the heat data, so this is database, 1999. So this is uh, King's. Of kinks on 90 degree partials and 30 degree partials yeah, here. And reconstruct uh, certains appears here. And he calculated energy levels. Kink structure on partials and their formation and migration energies he determined. Yeah? And his calculation made a uh, uh, essential influence on other research groups, especially MIT groups. Yeah. And also, this is uh, his topics and impurity dislocation interaction. So I just say that dislocation <coughs> topics. So uh, some kind of impurity prefer to exist dislocation core and make some stable state. This is a one phosphorus. Uh, this is a two phosphoruses. And various structures of impurities and dislocation complex show that. And also he showed that there are stabilities. So for experiment, how to determine the, this kind of activity of dislocation? This is uh, some kind of sketch for to measure the dislocation activities. Yeah? For example, at first, uh, this is some for silicon, for example, silicon. At first, to introduce the scratch on the surface as a dislocation source. So from dislocation source, dislocation appears like this. And uh, this is the HPT. So from scratch, 60 dislocations appears. And in high crystals, dislocation easily generated from the low stress. And this open circuit shows the high silicon. But oxygen doped crystals and also boron or Germany doped crystals, there are some kind of critical stress. This is a critical stress for macroscopic <coughs> dislocation generation. Uh, this is other input here. Yeah? And this is uh, just say that locking effect or one input effect. And higher region, the, in this case, there are different effect. This is a uh, dynamic motion at high stress. It just means that dislocation mobility are affected by input Impeded, especially electrical impedance. Yeah? So this is a critical source for dislocation generation. So uh, 
uh, against the uh, impeded concentration. Some impurities, for example, phosphorus arsenic and also boron. So over some 10 to 19 <coughs> per cubic centimeter, critical stress rapid, uh, rapidly increases. Just say that the effect of the, these kind of impurities on dislocation generation. Yeah. So just uh, uh, by these impurities, dislocation generation is suppressed. And this is the background of the critical stress. So dislocation is nucleated by uh, uh, from the scratch. And uh, during the heating stage, some impurity come to dislocation, uh, just say the segregation, and also make some aging effect to the appearance. And then under the stress, the dislocations are released from the state. So critical stress is a rather complex situation. So to understand it physically, first introduce dislocation and then the control of the state by aging at high temperatures. And we observe the release process. Just say that. Here, small one is a release dislocation. But lower stress region, ah, just say that. This is a the stress direction. Yeah. So low stress regions, this location cannot release from the state. So, so by this me uh, method, uh, we measure the unlocking stresses. So, this is the relation between the unlocking stress and also stressing temperature. Yeah. So, this location is uh, uh, aged at 900 degrees C for, for 15 minutes, very short time. But dislocations are quickly locked by impurities. Yeah? So this kind of unlocking stress depends on the stress temperatures. And by this relation, linear relations uh, can be analyzed by using this equation. This is the unlocking stress, and also uh, here, the e, e means that uh, interaction stress, interaction energies, and also uh, N means the density of the locking state. So we measure uh, this, uh, this kind of, we determine the, this kind of density and also interaction energies uh, against uh, various impurities. So, Anyway, important point is that the circulation energy is around uh, 4 electron volt or 4.5 electrons in some cases. Yeah? And also density is rather low, okay. 2 times 10 to 6 per centimeter. If we are, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 2 times, uh, 1 times 10 to 5 per, cubic, uh, per centimeter. This is uh, rather low in comparison to uh, discrete PT atoms. If we assume that discrete PT atom at the density comes to 2 times 10 to 6 per centimeter, and also interaction energy is rather low, less than 1 electron volt. Uh, this is uh, Malcolm's calculation. Uh, so he calculated many sta states, many structures. Yeah? And so this is show some kind of enlarged images. Boron, phosphorus, arsenic, and oxygen, and nitrogen. So in some cases, appears a large interaction energies. Large energies appear here. Boron at the bonding, um, at the bulk state, and also solid state. Yeah. <coughs> but there are oxygen here. Anyway, to looking. It just means that uh, some kind of segregation of impurities along dislocations. This is just origin of dislocations. And uh, we can make uh, uh, this kind of state, rather developed state. This is oxygen doped silicon and phosphorus doped silicon, and also gallium doped silicon. 
So along the dislocation lines, some particles appear. Yeah? And also, this is the destruction velocities in conducted silk. Yeah? So, in oh, here, this is better. So, by doping the in, uh, electric, electrical conductive impedances, the destruction velocity increases. Yeah? So, for example, 10 to 20 phosphorus or arsenic case, so destruction velocity is uh, 20 times. Higher. And also, bottom also become higher. And this is the temperature dependence of this distribution velocity depending on, on the MPT concentration and also MPT species. Yeah? And uh, distribution velocity can be described by this equation yeah? against the stress and also temperature. Yeah? And we determine this kind of actuation energy here. Yeah? And uh, this is a uh, dependence of the uh, activation energy of, for dislocation motion. Yes, this, uh, this magnitude. And this magnitude depends on the Fermi energy, Fermi energy of the crystals. Uh, this Fermi energy changes by the MPD concentration. And this is a silicon case. And this is a germanium case. So in silicon case, uh, it depends on the film energies, dislocation activation, uh, activation energy for dislocation motion changes like this. And adopt crystals here. So from this figure, we can determine that dislocation has some acceptor levels and also donor levels. And in German cases, only mm, acceptor level appears, yeah? So this image, this result uh, has, uh, ah, this result shows uh, some kind of comparison with experimental uh, estimations and also theoretical estimations. Malcolm's obtained uh, reported this result. So distribution has a uh, donor level and also acceptor levels uh, from the price advantage, so around 0.34 uh, and also 0.55. Because uh, our result is uh, only experiment at elevated temperature, so some magnitude is rather different. But, uh, but maybe <coughs> modified by using the, uh, collected by using the temperature dependence of uh, Fermi levels, yeah? And also band gap. Anyway, oh, sorry. Anyway, so, so uh, now 2019, so, over than 35 years ago, we almost catch him. <laughs> it, took, it takes very long time because the experiment is not so easy. Yeah. And now move to the 2000 vaccine, what do we have to To Malcolm and also to Sabini to report this kind of uh, barriers, uh, various barriers, uh, geek formation and migration energies. This is a uh, 4H silicon carbide. And uh, also, mm, just say that uh, she obtained the structure of kings on partial, partial dislocation and their formation and migration energies. Yeah? And this is a 4 H silicon carbide. And this is a gallium nitride. Also, he obtained some, this kind of deformation. 
Experimentally, this kind of experiment is not so easy because uh, materials is rather limited. Quality and also size are yeah, quite the big limitations. And uh, this is a uh, description process for various semiconductors, including uh, five gaps. As you can see, so some Silicon and compound, silicon compound semiconductors, uh, the signature velocity can be described by this equation. And to uh, wide gap semiconductors, we obtain the uh, only heat stress against the temperatures. From these relations, we can determine the activation energy also. So by using uh, these relations, uh, we obtain the uh, uh, activation energy for dislocation motion against the GB3 electron bar. Uh, GB3, this means that uh, dislocation unit energies, smallest dislocation unit uh, energy. Yeah? So, so, activation energy depends on like this, including various materials. Yeah? To six compounds and also Evitor semiconductors and also silicon carbide here. So, this is a gas present situation for <coughs> us. But uh, recently, we obtained some kind of interesting information. This is silicon carbide. And uh, this is the temperature dependence of the E stress against the temperature. Yeah? And to by deformation, crystal become to green. So some kind of green correlation by plastic deformations. This is a Raman spectral of deformed silicon carbide. So A, B, C, D, E, these areas so we measure the Raman spectra. And to, I guess E, we can see this kind of structure. Uh, spectrums. And these lines around 2000 Kaiser, uh, 200 Kaiser, this shows the full X silicon carbide. But in the C re e region, only uh, uh, there is no peaks around this area. This means that this area shows uh, become to the 3C silicon carbide. And this is an uh, optical absorption spectra of deformed silicon carbide. So, deformed crystals, non deformed crystals, the band H is here. And deformed case, band H changed to this position, around 2.4 electron volt. So, this green correlation can be understood like this. First, by deformation, by deformation, many partial dislocations are introduced and make stacking problems. Yeah? Uh, this is a uh, report by Pichel in France. Yeah? And uh, this is a high resolution image by TEM. So, in this area, 4H structure and also 3C structures appear here. Just say that and this is a perfect coverage structure and to one partial dislocation introduced here. Two partial dislocations are also introduced here. So let's say one, two, and three starting point. Four starting point is here. So just say that this part becomes to three C structures, not Poet structures. From this information, we can understand change from 4H silicon carbide to 3C silicon carbide by perfect information, by motion 
Shotki Pasharis. Two Pasharis, yeah. This is the origin of the green correlation of OH silicon carbon. So, first part, our experiment almost catching. <laughs> almost, not perfect. But, uh, wide gap scales, dislocation mobility is uh, very difficult to measure. <coughs> so, he has far ahead to catch up. And, but only we, inform, we have information, the green correlation of which you can cover by relative information. Uh, this is somewhat different. The diamond becomes the, uh, brown. But in that case, uh, uh, aggregation point of view. In this case, uh, practical. So, concrete answer. Just it, Malcolm is for him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Questions? Thank you for your lecture. Uh, just one of the um, images of the uh, silicon dislocations at the scratch, so at the millimeter scale, how, how were the dislocations made visible? Was there some sort of etching or? It's quite early on. Uh, no, further. Yeah, I have a question to that as well, but yeah, further for yeah, go, keep going. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that, that for example. So how how were those um, dislocations made visible? Yeah, uh, this is etching. Etching. Okay. Etching. okay. So the, by introducing the dislocation. Okay. And etched, and then etched. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So because the largest etch bit has uh, two etchings, two times etchings. Uh -huh. But the uh, small one is only one etching, mm -hmm. slightly different. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, on the other one that you showed a bit later, the 100 nanometer, no, if you go a few slides f oh. forward now, if you go forward on the slides, you know you had later in your presentation you had some more, um, uh, I think they were electromicrograph, yeah. so 100 nanometer scale. Yes. How yeah, these? So how how were these kind of uh, sort of defects made visible? That that is that of a TM. That, a TM. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. BMS there. Yeah. Okay. So so in this case, uh, rather earlier stage mm -hmm. in compared to the previous etching method. Okay. Great. Thank you. Maybe um, chairman's privilege. One defect I know that Malcolm studied a lot, which isn't on your list, is hydrogen. And uh, yeah. <laughs> how, how far behind are you to catch up with this? Hydrogen is called difficult. Only software is more. And a question related to burnts for the electron microscopy, because now it's possible to do atom resolution eels and such like, do you anticipate that this is going to lead to breakthroughs? Because we should, in principle, be able to see the position of these impurities now. Yeah, but the other problem is density. So to observe such kind of high resolution image, we need some kind of high density impurities. Okay. But because there are only small area of the high so these are difficult to find. This is true. Any other well, Of course, uh, that's how I am trying to encourage the experiment of the. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? In that case, I think we'll thank you again, Ishii.